I guess Postron here. And today let's talk about the 3.19 balance manifesto. So 3.19 is nearing and whenever there's a lot to say for GGG, there's going to be something called a balance manifesto. What this basically is, is simply pre-patch notes where they kind of like gather their thoughts. They want to prepare you for what's about to come. And well, this wasn't really received that well and I can definitely see why. Now, one thing I want to say is I have not a lot of positive feelings about this manifesto. I will tell you why, but I will still try to behave myself simply because this has happened before the patch notes come out and everything kind of changed or GG actually listened. And uh, one of the things I want to say is the balance manifesto came out very early. So maybe GG is actually looking for feedback. So I will give constructive feedback or at least try to be as constructive as possible. Let's get into what I actually think about it. Also, small note here, if you want to see my full reaction to this on my live stream over on twitch.tv slash palstron, I will leave a link down in the description to the VOD, but let's get into the video. So the first focus of their balance manifesto was about defense, all about defense. Now let's go through every single one of them. Spell suppression is now basically nerfed on gear, meaning you can't just slap on evasion gear onto every single character. If you are on the left side of the tree, you can't just get easily 100% spell suppression. What they want to do instead is they want to focus it more on actually investing into the passive tree. They made a lot of the small passive stronger. They made the notable stronger just across the board. So if you get to one of those notables, you'll mostly be fine. But if you're on the left side of the tree, well, tough luck because there's not really anything to gain here. The closest you have is maybe getting to reflexes plus mage bane or maybe getting instinct up there. But overall, spell suppression is now mostly a right side of the tree thing. Some highlights here where, for example, quick step and intuition got really buffed. So all of these basically got buffed. But one thing that people already took by pathing through it was quick step. This got buffed to 10% and also intuition, which was already a no brainer to take is now 8% suppress. Next change, Arctic Armor is actually kinda busted now. So what Arctic Armor used to do and what it still does is it gives you damage reduction while you're stationary. Now this was okay for stuff like channeling skills or maybe stuff like flicker strike, but in the end, it just wasn't strong enough. Well, they buffed it, it is now up to 21% less physical damage taken from hits while stationary and up to 20% less fire damage taken. Now, do I think this is enough to make it playable? Yes, for specific skills, I think it's actually playable now. It also gives you cannot be frozen, which can be nice to free up your Pantheon. So for skills that usually felt very dangerous to apply, for example, channeling skills, I think this is actually a very nice nerf and it's extremely strong. But then again, the skills that it supports are kind of lackluster right now. It could also help out melee, but we'll have to see because Mono Reservation also got touched and we're going to get to that in a second. Now, Defiance Banner, it got nerfed. We already knew this would be coming. It was in every single build, basically. Now, the thing about Defiance Banner is it was in kind of a weird spot where it kind of in incentivized you to go both Determination and Grace. Now, I guess it's a little bit less incentivized to go both because... For example, you would have Determination, you would already go Defiance Banner, but it would also give you Evasion. So now you're kind of double dipping, so you might as well go Grace. That was the, the case in a lot of builds, and that is now not as possible anymore, which on top of Spell Suppression for left side builds especially, is quite a huge nerf. Now, when it comes to Keystone, they kind of tried to buff them. They tried to buff Wind Dancer, and they tried to buff Arrow Dancing. So these are here, Wind Dancer and arrow dancing is down here. Now you can take a look yourself. I don't think these are gonna do anything, but maybe I'm wrong. Now the next buff on the list is Ward. Ward might actually be very strong right now and a contender for a new defensive setup. So basically Ward now is faster there again. So after it gets depleted, it only takes four seconds to come back, but you can now get 58% um, faster restoration of Ward on each your helmet, your boots, and your gloves, meaning you can get this down to like 1.4 seconds. And if you think about like a 2,000 to 3,000 shield that comes back every 1.4 seconds, that sounds kind of crazy. For example, as kind of a comparison, you have Bastion of Elements here, which you can't reduce. It's always five seconds and it's only for elemental damage. So this might be something to look out for. Obviously, you would have to sacrifice your helmet, your gloves, and your boots for it. But overall, I think this is still something to keep in mind. Then we have Mind Over Matter, which got buffed from 30 to 40% of damage taken as mana. I think this is a good start, but it's not enough. Archmage definitely needs a buff. And then at the end, we also have Fortify here, which got changed so it's easier to apply for melee builds. Now, there were some extensive minion changes. I would just tell you to go ahead and look at them yourself. But some highlights here. Now, first up, I'm not the biggest minion expert, 
but I have people around me that know a lot about them. So I kind of consulted with them. Now, number one is fire golems might actually be extremely strong. They now have sort of a ranged mortar attack and their damage got buffed by quite a bit so this might be something going into it will be really hard to say until we actually see how it looks like srs got quite the buff skellies are heavily nerfed now the thing is i think they're still strong but there might be better options out there absolution got kind of nerfed for leveling but it has a better end game now it has better scaling so for something like the doriani's prototype end game build that crypt made this might be pretty huge arakali is pretty hard there is a reddit thread that talks about is arakali actually buffed is it nerfed i will link to it down in the description it's a little bit more complicated than that now next up we have one of the more hype things out there we get more minion gear options so that means wands that are actually accessible earlier that roll minion type modifiers you have a shield you have rings that you can now customize they all have minion type rolls we don't actually know what that looks like maybe more flat damage um, they definitely talked about crit so that's something else there's a lot more crit scaling going to be on gear but we don't know how far they went with that. There might be like a plus one to all minion skill gems on shield, for example, which would be crazy. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Then we have Necromancer, which got pretty much blasted. Now, the thing about Necro here is this will not exist anymore. You don't get the plus two to level of all minion skill gems, which is crazy. So this got replaced by minions have unholy might which is very harsh change basically now what i will say here is people say necro is dead my question would be what are you going to go instead of it right some minion builds can maybe go occultist mostly nobody will go guardian i think overall necromancer still has too much strength in it even though they just nerfed the arguably strongest node and next up let's talk about the explosive arrow nerf i know a lot of you guys are thinking about explosive arrow right now what's going to happen to it so here's the thing a long time ago in 3.16 crouching tuna and myself we're testing this before the buffs were even out so before this line even existed right this line here with the five percent more damage per ailment it didn't even exist now it's three percent so it's still there but the bill used to be even worse than that and it still could clear everything so what i can tell you from experience is explosion deal three percent more damage with ailments per explosive error on target instead of five percent is still completely fine and no this will not kill the build now there's a little bit more incentive to go hit based i guess the problem with hit based is you don't have proliferation so your clear will be lacking so basically what this means for ea is for mapping basically nothing changes you don't have a lot of fuses on the enemy anyways so the difference is going to be very very small and against bossing the maximum damage that you can lose is 20 percent basically you don't always have full fuses on the boss but whenever you would have its 20%, usually it's going to be more like 15. And yes, I will be updating the build guide once we know the full patch notes. Now, probably the biggest nerf of this whole manifesto were Divine Blessings. So Divine Blessing was basically this aura that you kind of had for free. You had to sacrifice life because you supported it with life tab. And you kind of got it without having to reserve it. You just pushed it every, I don't know, 10 to 20 seconds, depending if you could fit in increased duration. And there you go. You get like an extra 20 to 30% damage. And most builds now lose this, which is actually quite huge. Um, this is across the board for most builds. Now, what this will mean is... Now you will not use it anymore. So if you have four sockets, which is huge, but it's going to be very hard for most builds to actually leverage those sockets and find something else that actually gives them damage. So overall, this will just be a huge damage nerf. Next up, let's talk about skill buffs. Now, here's the thing. I'm obviously memeing with Cleave. If you haven't seen this already, they try to buff some skills. Now, I'm not sure what's happening over there at GDG. There used to be times where they would just put out a balance patch. They would buff, I don't know, 30 skills by like 30, 40% and shake up the meta. Nowadays, we get stuff like this. A skill that is 0% play rate on PoE Ninja gets two extra radius. I have no idea what's going on over there, but I would really, really hope that at some point they realize, like you could probably buff most of these by 30 to 50% and it wouldn't make a dime. The disparity between the top builds and these kind of skills is insane. There is no chance most of these are ever going to see play. So I'm going to pick out some of them that are actually 
semi-hype, right? Number one, Fire Trap got nerfed. I kind of jumped over that earlier, but RF might be back to Scorching Ray because Scorching Ray got buffed, Fire Trap got nerfed. Overall, it might still be a nerf to RF because Fire Trap was really strong. Artillery Ballista is actually looking kind of interesting. I might make a video about that. We're kind of like leveling it on stream as I speak here, but this basically got a lot of quality of life. Like the arrows fall faster, the delay between arrows is way faster. It got like a 14% damage buff. It has more AOE. Overall, we'll have to wait and see, but you might see a video in the coming days. And the overall most hype buff, I guess, is Haste. The haste buff is pretty interesting for minions, for aura stackers, and also for lab runners. Now, the thing about this is it might also be that now you run Haste during the campaign if you're on softcore, unless you're like me and you're just like slapping on purity so you don't die. But overall, this is now a chunky amount of movement speed and um, might turn Haste into a more competitive option, although I don't think it's still there yet. Now, the ascendancy changes are a little bit annoying to me. Now, number one, I think the Jug buff is interesting. Jug got 40% life regeneration rate, and it got a stat where 8% of your armor also counts for elemental damage, which is interesting. It sounds pretty weak, but overall, I think this could stack up real quickly. I'm more interested in the 40% life regeneration rate. This might actually make it viable for RF builds to maybe go Jug. Just to be clear, this is basically a more multiplier to all of your life regen you have already. So this might make it a lot easier, especially for RF builds that are just starting out the league. You will have to ask Pox for that. It is overall still a hardcore ascendancy because it doesn't really have any more damage multipliers. Now, when it comes to Pathfinder, basically, I think they just kind of screwed up so what they did is in my opinion they're gonna make it the new trickster this is going to be the least played ascendancy most likely flagellants is dead i'm gonna talk about that in a second so what they basically did is they made the alchemist notable a little bit better this one over here the master alchemist node which is the worst ascendancy in history there has never been anything like this and now instead of 20 percent chance to freeze shock and ignite you get 20 percent increased effect of magic flasks so what that means is, if you look at this mosh right here, it gives 10% increased effect to flasks, but to every flask, also unique flasks, and 20% is supposed to be an ascendancy. Don't forget that the first line here is completely garbage. It is really, really bad. So they basically didn't change anything here. They took away the 6% reduced elemental damage taken here. But even further, they completely destroyed Master Surgeon. Now, if you guys remember Flagellant's Flasks, this is basically the combo that you had with Pathfinder where you would regen a lot of life by automating your flask. They go up and down, up and down, and you get 6% life whenever you activate a flask. Now, this is basically dead now because they changed the seven charges here all the way to three. This is now your end game amount. The thing that is usually the level 12 amount. I think that's kind of fine to nerf it. I think it's completely over nerfed like GG loves to do, but it just kind of stings because they wanted to rework it. This node is still garbage. They made this node worse and now Master Surgeon isn't really playable anymore. So I would just like to know which nodes you should actually take. Now for poison builds, a lot of the time you can get Master Toxicist, Nature's Reprisal, but now what are you going to do? You're not going to take Master Alchemist. It's still bad. You're going to have to take Nature's Boon and Nature's Adrenaline. It makes no sense. Pathfinder is going to be the least played ascendancy. You can call me out on that. Now in the unique item category, something interesting is Ashes of the Stars actually does not get nerfed. However, Crystallize Omniscience did. Instead of giving 1% all res and 1% pen per 10 omniscients, it's now per 15. Now overall, I don't think this nerf is as bad as you might think. And that's basically just because the boot mods that gave us cold damage or lightning damage per dexterity, per intelligence, will be gone because we're common areas are not around anymore. This means that basically the high ceiling is going to go down anyways. And most people will be going back to Omni regardless. It's still going to result in like 20 to 30% less damage overall, which is really bad. The elemental resistance, I would say, will only really be relevant for annihilating light builds. What I will say is that it was nice to be overcapped, for example, against Ellie Weakness. But without that extra resistance, you're probably still going to be capped or very close to capped. Maybe you need like one or two jewel mods. But for annihilating light builds that need every single bit of resistances, this will be a tough indirect nerf. Then we have two big boys here at the end. Brittle 
is now actually balanced. So 5% baseline is now a 2% baseline. This is relevant for brittle boots because they always give the lowest amount and it can now scale up to 6% and not up to 15%. Now this gives base crit, so it was just completely broken from the get-go. I think it's now in a lot more healthy state and a lot of builds that kind of just went crit because of brittle will now have to find another way, which is another pretty huge nerf. And at the end, a big nerf, the Reservation Mastery gets removed. This is a nerf for everybody across the board. This is 15% Modern Reservation Efficiency, will not exist anymore at all, not even nerfed, just removed, right? Now, I understand why they did it, but overall, it's a lot of power taken out of builds. This will probably mean you can run one Purity less, maybe a Herald less, maybe even the 50% Reservation. I uh, understand why they did it, because they didn't want builds to feel like they have to path to Charisma or Sovereignty or Champion of the Cause. I understand, but still, I would have liked there to be another alternative. And this will mean that Ashes of the Stars will probably go up quite a bit in price, because that Mana Reservation Efficiency is now a lot more in demand. So what are my thoughts on this manifesto overall? Number one, the character power of basically everybody got nerfed across the board. We lost Reservation Efficiency Mastery, a Divine Blessing setup that is usually like 20% more damage. We lost Defiance better because let's be real, almost everybody ran that. A lot of builds lost Spell Suppression. Omni got nerfed, which is now going to be the default way for a lot of Elemental builds to scale their endgame now that the Attribute Stacker Boots are gone. And Brittle was just such an easy way to cap crit. It was kind of like a easy solution for a lot of builds. All these things will mean the game will get a lot harder. Now, on top of all these defensive nerfs, we also didn't really get many alternatives. They were talking about wanting to provide us with more alternatives to not have to rely on spell suppression, do not have to rely on armor and evasion, but we still have to. All we got is like ward, which might be interesting, but let's face it, that is not enough as a substitute. Then we had those skill buffs that were an absolute joke. Like I was actually really disheartened when we looked at that on stream. They could have done way, way, way more. This is not what we have waited for for six months. I really hope they do better. Maybe they change something up until the patch knows and otherwise the new skills, if there are any, will hopefully carry. But all in all, I am going to reserve my judgment for now until the patch notes are out. Right now, I'm not very happy. There has not been anything done to make skills more interesting. EA is still fine. Seismic Trap is still fine. I don't really know how this would really shake up the meta. The skill buffs are an absolute joke. This is the worst thing here. Now, I could stomach everything like this, the game getting harder, fine, but at least give us more tools to work with, shake it up a little bit. So I'm looking forward to the new skills, but other than that, until the patch notes come out, I'm uh, a little bit wary. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. But yeah, what can I say more? What do you think about this manifesto? I don't know. I have my thoughts yesterday live on stream and I'm very happy that I didn't upload that directly to YouTube because I was a lot more, let's say, knee jerk in terms of reactions there. Overall, I hope it will be fine. I hope in the patch notes we will see some stuff like maybe Nightblade changes, Aegis changes, and then a lot more buffs. It's kind of weird that at this point I'm only hoping for nerfs because I know GG so well, but it is what it is. I really hope we're going back to a 3.13, 3.12 a GGG where they actually care. They actually want to shake up the meta. They buff more skills, give us more options. With that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.